That's a Mustang GT. That's a 67 Mustang, and this is us introducing Oscar's Apocalypse build. Oh yeah, but this one's really badly crashed. Like way worse than what we started with on the last one. Now the engine's gonna have to come out. All right guys, well truck pulling seems to be uh, somewhat successful <laughs> method. <laughs> Oscar went insane with the cutting. He cut everything on the car apart. <laughs> I left for like a couple hours and this is what we came back to. Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to another episode of BS for Build. In today's episode, Oscar's Mustang is finished and we're gonna show you all the progress uh, that Oscar made to bring it to this finishing point. He's been working in the background for probably close to a month now while we were focusing on Kyle's car. He's built a bunch of really cool stuff, he's installed a bunch of cool stuff, and the car is ready to roll, it's ready to go, and uh, you're gonna love the paint selection that he went with. So uh, stay tuned. So when we wrapped up our last episode, we actually didn't finish the other side of the side skirt. It, was, it got like past midnight. So uh, we started by building a frame of that. And then Oscar jumped into the center console area. We didn't really show this ever, but the screen was broken. It's a really weird thing to have break in the accident, but order to use one off eBay. Oscar got that thing dialed in there very fast, actually. And then we have a new screen for his center console, which is really important because it, you know, uh, I think you turn on and off your heated seats and things like that with that. So um, I, I really like the way that we well that oscar welded in these side skirts so it's just a bunch of little tacks and then when you stand down the tacks it looks pretty cool and this is something i'm thinking about doing for the single seater uh when we're kind of joining different pieces but it, it actually comes out looking pretty pretty cool and pretty like i don't know like a little grungy then he's onto the uh, rear diffuser this is a piece off of a brz rocket bunny kit that i had laying around definitely garbage it's been in my backyard for since the beginning of beast rebuild so five years now because there's a big box a evap box charcoal box under there that he wanted to cover up next we're jumping into part of the the other part of the rear diffuser that sticks out on the side so with the wheels being so wide we actually really needed to make sure that we kind of filled in this area a little bit or it looked goofy from the back so we started with something that was more kind of triangular and uh, we actually spent an entire day working on this and coming up with different ideas and pretty much every idea that we tried just started to look worse and worse and worse so eventually we kind of uh, fell back to a more square style of a diffuser because these triangles started to look more like ninja stars and it just didn't really fit it was making the car look too japanese when it's you know supposed to have that american muscle look so we started going out with something that was a little bit more square and cut off and we referenced some of the some of our favorite designers like Kaisel Salim uh, and um, Yasa Design. They they built some pretty cool stuff in in 3D, and we kind of just took a look at some of the stuff that they did that we liked, and found something that looked pretty cool and followed the body lines. Next up is one of my favorite things that Oscar built on this car. So he's starting to build this uh, rear, little rear spoiler, a little lip. And it was so cool to see how Oscar cut all these little pieces out of aluminum. So you see him right now, he's just cutting these little, cutting these little triangles out. And, uh, and then he bends each side. It's like he's like a wizard with building these like brackets from just flat metal and then makes them like all 3D. So he's making four of these aluminum 90 degree brackets. Well, they're not quite 90 degrees because that's not the angle he wanted. And then now we're working on the front fender. See what you guys did to Oscar? He read too many comments and then he just jumped right into the fender. Uh, anyways, we did want to test fit and look at what the fenders look like using the black plastic fenders. And we found out that all we needed to do really to make them look cool that we liked was start them up higher on the wheel and then cut more off of the... Uh, of the back so it was just a little bit less fender it didn't wrap all the way around
But uh, what Oscar's doing right now is getting the locks figured out. So he's changing the locks out on the car and then brand new door handles as well on the car. Uh, it's really important that obviously, you know, he has a locking car and, and has the right keys for it and everything like that. It's already going to have two sets of keys. It has one key for the one key for the door and one key for the ignition. Next up is the door plates. So you got these door plates that jump in here like this and uh, they're pretty sweet and uh, just cut them out of aluminum, measure the door plate side, cut them out of aluminum, and then we had some real nice fancy billet hardware that we put in the doors as well to operate the door handle and the window crank. With these fender flares, we actually later on let them get a little bit dusty, a little bit dirty, and then we sprayed a coat of matte clear over them to kind of dull them out and make them look like the rest of the black on the car, which is kind of cool. So we happen to have these awesome like bullet style mirrors uh, laying around the shop. Uh, for a Mustang and uh, Oscar I, it did not take long he got those installed on the car really fast they they had a really nice look I like having a few like nice little chrome things hiding on the car that were just definitely not not cheap you know So with these taillights, we wanted to take the same idea that we had on our last Fastback Mustang where we were trying to use the LED elements out of the stock taillight and the wiring harness and everything so you could keep the sequential um, and obviously it's just so much easier if you're not rewiring the whole entire thing. Now out of some really random stroke of luck, each vertical strip of LEDs fits perfectly in the vertical strip within the classic housing. So the classic housing kind of has a plastic separator in the middle that keeps the light from shining from like from bleeding over from one strip to the next strip um, and Oscar is able to just lay down some uh, some electrical tape so nothing got accidentally grounded out and then bolt them in there pretty quickly throw in the gasketing and everything and run the wiring harness out the back and the plugs actually the craziest thing is the plug from the modern one actually fits into the back of the thing so the wiring is nice and clean as well when we got into this windshield is like we'd never done classic glass before so we had to figure out how to install a windshield with gasketing the other thing is classic windshields don't have a black part at the bottom so what we had to do was uh, paint our own black strip on the bottom or else you're gonna see all this crazy cutting that we did into the cowl and we wanted to hide all that up so we watched a few YouTube videos about running a string around the gasketing and then we were able to throw the window in pull the string out of the gasketing which kind of folds the rub rubber over the pinch weld and we had a window installed This cold air intake that we got off of eBay, uh, it, I'm sure it fits great for the standard Mustangs, but it did not work for our application. So Oscar's just going to give it the old chop and TIG weld it back together. It's aluminum. It was good quality aluminum at least. So he is able to uh, cut it, weld it back together, give it a coat of paint, and make it fit exactly in the car the way that he wanted to, which is really good. That's a catalytic converter that um, uh, you didn't see that uh, from a different car. Anyways, uh, next up is the gas cap so we had to find a way to put fuel in this thing because it was running dangerously low on fuel i ordered like a gas cap for like a jeep or something on ebay and um, it's got a nice little housing that kind of actually fits over the neck of the filler neck um, so it was a pretty easy install oscar just built a template and then uh, threw the thing in there bolted it in there Headlights are great, need headlights. There's a lot of different wires in here that do different things. You have high beams, low beams, daytime running lights, and blinkers for each light. And the wires don't match from side to side. So it's a it's a fun job of uh, identifying which wires, which the cool thing about the Mustang light though, is that there is an individual wire to do every single thing. So it is a good car for like retrofitting lights because you actually have an individual wire to do every single thing that you need within the headlight. And then Oscar uh, tried to do some modern fog lights and shake a truly can all over a table for a day, uh, but basically it didn't it didn't work out. So he had to go back to some classics. We were actually kind of lucky that we had uh, two sets of those because he killed one. In the sides here, it's all about 
reinforcing the steel uh, where the door and that frame kind of line up. You really got to bolster this steel in and we'll see how well this holds together if the car tweaks too much on the track or anything else like that. If the if it's too flimsy here because this is probably the weakest point of the of the car so we tried our best to box everything in but we might need to kind of actually box that channel in and then you can see Oscar went real hard with the seam sealer which is a really good idea because that's you know you want to keep that weatherproof that area from getting water or air or anything in there so just cover every seal or every seam basically with seam sealer and that that actually is a real nice way to finish it off With this exhaust, Oscar actually cut the exhaust off when he pulled the engine because the exhaust was going to be an epic pain to take off. And uh, the, the car had not been running well at all. Um, so we had to fix the exhaust to get those rear O2 sensors in there all the way. And um, once we actually mounted the rear O2 sensors, the car started running perfectly. So it was an issue of um, this car gets really, really upset and does not drive well with the rear O2 sensors deleted and no real flow through exhaust. And now we're moving on to the interior. Oscar's wor working on um, the different pieces of very thick steel, uh, well not super thick steel, but pretty thick steel to box in the frame rubber reinforcement so we can tie in the roll cage. So you got to have a roll cage on a car like this because you don't know what's going to happen to the body in case of a rollover. You can't rely on that thing to hold the car up. So you're really building an inner skeleton that you're going to be able to rely on um, in the event of a crash or anything like that. So um, he built those two things and then he broke a window uh, <laughs> on accident. He was trying to hammer out a dent in the back and broke the rear window glass. Um, and uh, I'm assuming while those things cool down, he jumped into some plywood work. So we just use this, uh, you know, really dense particle board um, to build some shelving and stuff like that. And then he also drilled out a bunch of little holes that he can weld through for these interior panels that he's put in here, which actually these came out really nice looking. Um, and he put a, uh, a little bit of a bend in them uh, to help him from like not to rattle around or flex, even though I don't think there's any chance for him to do that since they're so hardcore welded in there. But anyways, drill a bunch of holes so he can put weld through those holes and weld those up. Now he's uh, welding in the roll cage supports. Um, and it's this is basically a half cage. We don't have the door bars like we had in the other Mustang. Just a little quick and dirty getting the job done. Um, half cage, but he really wanted the cross braced bar. He likes the look of the X bar. Um, which a lot of you guys commented on the last Mustang build that you wanted to see. So he got that um, dialed in. It just takes a lot of extra time, but it was worth it. It looks good. And then in the back, we have a bunch of different places where the modern Mustang body or the modern Mustang's unibody uh, was cut or trimmed so we could fit the, the classic body over it. And then we need to connect these things back up uh, to ke keep out the weather, uh, to help with rigidity of the body, to keep out sound, dust, all of those different things. So Oscar did a great job. He's really good at working this thin sheet metal and bending it into making these really clean looking connections. So he connected everything in the back um, to itself and then what we didn't catch on film but you're gonna see a little bit later is uh, we seam sealed everything around all those seams so um, no weather or anything is gonna be able to get through there either so we got all got a nice coat of seam sealer um, and right now Oscar's building the brackets that hold the stock seat belts so you got the nice stock functioning seat belts airbags are all disabled for this car so he's not gonna have any airbags but you got the seat belts he, uh, normally we seal up the seats by pulling the whole skin off and then sewing them inside out and putting them back on but I think Oscar wanted to do the quick and dirty way and I was very surprised by how good this actually looks he just got some black upholstery thread and uh, and really in no time at all completely like fix that seat up and, and you can't really see it unless you're looking for it so if anybody's in a rush that's a quick way to do it so now we're taking um, some uh, felt this is felt that you just go down to your fabric store grab some felt wrapping it around gluing it down wrapping around and stapling it on the back of those pieces of plywood so he can throw those or particle board sorry so you can throw those into uh, into the back and kind of start to build out the rear deck so it looks a little bit more normal so now you can see some of the seam sealer and Kyle's putting in some of the sound deadening that we're gonna return to in a little bit um, so this is the back piece that covers up the back piece is pretty tricky to fit it in here because of the roll cage being in here We couldn't just get it in any way that we wanted to and now Oscar is kind of sizing out the bottom pieces as well He's gonna build cut cut out these bottom pieces turns out carpentry is a little bit easier than um, Custom building sheet metal stuff, but um, it's still tricky and 
fun to do though because the transformation is pretty epic once you guys see the end of this at the end of this uh this time lapse i'm going to show you guys kind of how it all looks at the end and walk you through it and give you a closer look at everything And so now the interior is almost done as far as all the fabric stuff. And there's just a little bit of a gap between the door or the, the inner frame and the outer frame. And then we also had this cool uh, Mustang trim piece that we threw on the doors that covered up uh, part of the, the door gap. Um, and that's how they do it on classic Mustangs. And it actually helps a lot and looks really good. So you can see Kyle just throwing in all the sound ending everywhere. With this already being a loud car, though, the last thing you want to hear is rock chips going tink, 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 tink under your car and stuff like that. And a good coat of sound deadening here is going to really help that not be a thing and make it feel like a more modern car. And finally, we got a little bit of welding. The last thing that we forgot to do structurally is weld the car to the car, basically. So this is welding the body to the classic frame or to the modern frame rails and then a quickie battery tie down just to uh, all threaded posts and a piece of construction metal. All right, and with that, the Oscar Stang is finished. And now I want to show you guys around in some of the details that he has done. But while it's strapped on the dyno, he wants to give it one more shot at the dyno to see if he can put down a better number. He doesn't think his last number was legitimate. It was a fluke. He thinks it's a fluke. I don't really agree. I think we gave it, I think we, I think we showed all the horsepower that it had, but we're gonna do it one more time. It's already hooked up to the dyno. So before we take it off, we're gonna show you right now what a stock 2016 Mustang GT with an air intake and an exhaust does wheel horsepower wise. Why not throw it down? And then we'll take it outside and show you guys more in detail this the new uh, additions that Oscar's made to this car. There's a lot of stuff to show you. All right, warm her up, sir. <laughs> Oscar's power pole and he actually made a little bit more power the first time so <laughs> he made a little bit less power this time he did get into the power faster over here because he last time he said he wasn't quite full throttle and that's what he was worried about so we have more power over here than our last graph but a little bit less peak power anyways this car to the crank makes like 400 410 around there and to the wheels it produces about 350 uh, and change to the wheels horsepower so that's very good numbers very respectable numbers let's get it outside outside and show the people your handiwork all right we got the oscar staying out of the shop and we're out here we went for a quick little drive to a little parking lot to show you guys around so we're just going to try and point on some of the new things and maybe any of the details that we can point out so new headlights led headlights full low beam high beam turn signal built into the headlights i think they look pretty good with the black housing and it contrasts with the black uh, fender which we also added and uh, the black lower area too and then they have turn signals built in so what more could you want um Oscar, by your guys' request, we tested out the uh, the look of the plastic black fender on the car, and it actually looks really, really good. It's kind of getting hit by the sun really hard, and so it looks a little strange, but uh, you guys are right. Those fenders are the way to go. The hood you guys have seen, but the cowl was an addition. Now, I forgot to 3D print. We got some 3D printed pieces that are going in here, here, and here. There's a, a actual wiper motor that's right here, but Oscar didn't want to cut the hole out of the hood yet until he needs it, being summer, he doesn't need it yet, so we haven't done that yet. But the cowl is fully waterproof. That's why you can kind of see some foam in there stuff so it's waterproof and airproof so no air or water is going to kind of come through here and land in here it's all going to land in the right area and then the air will come into the well it won't go into the cabin uh the side mirrors are very nice very nice we get the handles the locks oh yeah yeah new handles new locks new side mirrors um and then i guess with that we'll just jump you guys right into the interior so we didn't finish out every little detail. Like you can see there's still some side paneling and this going on, but other than that, it's, it's pretty damn clean looking in here. So 2016 interior, custom built um, door cards, uh, hardware from Downstar. Thanks to Downstar, I'll put a link in the description. Shout out to those guys. We were gonna use this a lot in the other Mustang we never got to. Um, really nice billet door handles and uh, window mirrors. Those are, or window rollers. Those are super dope. And then um, we took this thing that was chrome and we spray painted it with a little bit of matte clear so it wouldn't shine too much. A little matte 
matte looking aluminum uh, trim piece. And then 2016 Mustang interior. We worked with the uh, four scan tool a little bit to turn off all the TPMS stuff. And uh, also it had some my key issues that we were able to kill all that with the four scan tool, which is pretty cool. We haven't put the headliner in yet. Uh, it's kind of a low priority, but that will be coming. And let me show you into the back. So Oscar really knocked it out of the park in the back here. So you can see that he's got his uh, crossbar, cross braced roll cage. So you gotta have a roll cage on one of these conversions to make sure that you stay safe in the rollover event. Very hard to see. Picked an interesting time of sunset to try and film all this black stuff. So anyways, you can see the roll cage is in there. And then Oscar, at the end of the video, you saw uh, with a little bit of plywood and felt, stretched the felt over the plywood, uh, went ahead and built a bunch of different things. So the back decking, that, that uh, back piece, and then these two pieces slide in. And he's got kind of a swivel part right there. You can swivel it and open that up to take these two things out if he needs to at all. And then the stock seat belts are mounted in down below with then the connecting part up on the roll cage, which is really great. Great. So the interior looks nice and clean. And we just took a ride in it. It's super cozy too. There's plenty of room for your leg on the side with the door and foot space and everything like that. It's super, super cozy. You can see the rear deck a little bit better here. And he's got the speakers. We're working on getting some speaker covers for these eventually. And uh, rear glass. Yeah, I guess my hand shouldn't go through here. Oscar accidentally broke the rear window out and we haven't been able to get our gasketing in yet. It should be in tomorrow or the next day. We have new glass. We just don't have gasketing to install the glass. So we're taking this thing out on a track day at the end of the week. Hopefully our gasketing will be in by then. The rear spoiler, have they seen that since the last time I was up? This rear spoiler is really cool. Oscar built all of these custom little brackets to hold it in here, and this looks super badass. And then he put the Mustang lettering on across there. And then jumping into the back area, so we have all the sound deadening from, uh, this is a company called Be Quiet. I'll put a link in the description. They're very affordable and it works very well. Sound deadening stuff. So we covered the whole back and some of the other interior and sound deadening. We got the spare tire in there with the jack as well. And then Oscar retrofit the uh, classic taillight housings to hold the modern taillight LEDs, similar to what we did on our last Mustang. And it all fits in there. Oscar will go ahead and turn it on right now. I'll show you. So he's got that awesome sequential LED and it looks super clean and super nice. So that's a really, really nice added thing. And if anybody's doing this back home, I mean, it's a pretty simple, uh, straightforward thing. And then coming back over here, we had to build a little bit of steel off of the fender to kind of help the wide body flow down a little bit so the wheel didn't look so out of place. We got that. This is a rear diffuser from a BRZ that we threw on here. And what we really wanted to do was come out to match the craziness of the exhaust. And although it looks a little crazy at first glance, it's just the right amount of crazy, I feel like. it's It really does look, good it's like it's busy and it's got a lot going on but it's all a lot of good stuff so i really like it so it all comes together to be a very, very cool package. Now remember, we really wanted to use up the scraps and, and stuff that we had around the shop that we weren't utilizing. What we had was a 67 Mustang Coupe. We had a lot of body panels and a lot of body parts and things like these wheels and steel, obviously, laying around the shop and we wanted to utilize it. So that's when we picked up a 2016 Mustang GT at auction, brought it all the way down, and then rebuilt it back up into a working, functioning 67, which is a really, really cool thing didn't cost too much money and uh it's a hell of a 67 it's a unique look i love the patina i like the panels mismatched i like that you know you don't have to focus on washing this thing every other day it's a really really cool look and it's a car that's definitely going to turn heads on a budget this is going to turn heads a lot more than any stock 2016 mustang gt that's for sure so we've officially hit that goal of trying to get Kyle and Oscar their own builds, their own cars. They're both to a point where they can run and drive. So we have rented out a, a, a track, an autocross track, and we're gonna take them at the end of this week to go uh, up against the Huracan. Why not? I just wanna take the Berntcon out to a track. So we have a track rental. In the next episode, we're gonna be getting the Berntcon track ready, a lot more dyno tuning and a bunch of good stuff like that. So tune in for that. And then we're hitting the track with our three cars and uh, the road trip to the track. Hopefully nothing will break down. and, uh, and We'll spend some time on the track and then after that it's the boat for all you guys wondering when we're going to work on the boat it's right after that thank you guys so much for watching thanks for being a part of this journey remember to subscribe so you can follow us for more crazy stuff like this and we'll see you guys on the next one peace come, come on.